This is LabQuest 19 titled Impulse and Momentum. In this lab, this is our setup. We have our track with our dynamics cart on the track. At this end, we have a force sensor. And at this end, we have the motion detector. What we're going to do is we're going to launch our cart by pressing on, by loading the spring-loaded plunger, pressing it in, putting it. We've got our end stop here so that the plunger, when it's released, can push off of the end stop. And whoops, it's a good idea to use something other than the fleshy part of your finger because that tends to get stuck on the release button as you just Take saw. something that's hard and slippery and press on the release button like that and you'll see there's an elastic band here and the cart goes down and the band begins to stretch and then it comes back. That's a change in momentum. That's an impulse. We're going to measure the impulse two different ways. Over here the force sensor is going to generate a force versus time graph and on this side my motion detector will uh, record the velocity of the uh, cart throughout. So watch here on the screen I'll show you what a sample data set looks like. Put your cart up against the end stop and place the elastic band and make sure it's not going to get caught on anything as the cart rolls away. Once you're ready to take your data Start your LabQuest data collection. There we go. And your data will collect. After it collects, you'll need to zoom in. You'll want to zoom in on the data. So I'm going to highlight those sections. That section of the graph. Make sure both graphs are active and auto scale by clicking on the a icon up at the top of the screen and zoom in. There we go. Now you can see my force versus time graph as the elastic band begins to stretch and then as it begins to come back. Here's where the string goes tight. Here's where the string goes slack. Here's my velocity versus time graph. Before the band begins to stretch, here's my initial velocity. Moving toward the sensor is a negative value, and then after it uh, reverses direction, here's my velocity uh, for coming uh, back. To find out what these values are, just put your cursor. There we go. I just clicked my cursor on that part of the graph, and right here the xy coordinates show up. Or you can look at the time and go to your table and look up for the time what the force and velocity values are. Here's our equation. Impulse, represented by the letter J, is equal to a change in momentum, delta P. So that's my final velocity times mass minus my initial velocity times mass. And we know that a change in momentum is caused by some force acting for some amount of time. So from this graph of velocity versus time, we'll be able to measure our final velocity and our initial velocity, and then find this time point and this time point, take the difference, and that's the duration of the impulse. That's our time in the equation, and we can solve for the average force. The blue graph here is similar to what you see on the screen. The area under the force versus time graph is the impulse. When we use this data from the second graph and divide it by the duration of the impulse, we're left with the average force. That would be represented on this graph by the red rectangle. And the area under the red rectangle is equal to the area under the blue curve. The lab will ask you for the average force. That's what you get when you solve this equation for F average. And it will also ask you for the maximum force. So that comes from this reading right there. Then you want to repeat the experiment 
I did the first one with a thin elastic band. You'll want to repeat the experiment with the, th the thick elastic band as well. Do it again and take your data for two runs. One with the thick band and one with the thin band. When you fill in your data table, the first table, massive cart, goes here. The description of the elastic band 1 and description of elastic band 2, that's just thin or thick. Then here's where you fill in uh, your information from your uh, force sensor and your motion detector. Uh, wherever you see meters per second, that's going to be uh, the velocity of the cart, final velocity, initial velocity, and the difference of the two. Uh, where you see units of newtons times seconds, that means you're going to use the area under the curve because the area under the curve is newtons on the y-axis, seconds on the x-axis, so the area is the product of newtons, second, newtons and seconds. So when you see those units, newtons, seconds, you know you're getting that information from the force graph. Uh, this is your average force that you calculated. Uh, this is your maximum force which is this value right here. And then in this uh, last table down here, these newton seconds numbers are the same as what you got from, from right there. And this change in momentum with units of kilogram meters per second, whenever you see the kilogram meters per second in this column, you're going to use your change in momentum from the motion detector, which is the final momentum minus the initial momentum. Then, in this area here, the percent difference, this is how you calculate it. The difference of the change in momentum using the uh, force graph and the change in momentum using the motion detector. Take the difference of those two and then divide it by the average of those two. And just as an example, you might get 0 .04. That, of course, relates to or equates to 4%.